Here's your wrestling news for November 26, 2021. And your headlines for today include, fans shouted the R word at Cody Rhodes during AEW Dynamite main event, Austin Gunn issues apology for using racial slurs, Jim Ross is taking time off from AEW, Tony Khan reacts. Bianca Belair talks about her chaotic experience at SummerSlam, WWE files new trademark for ECW, Ridge Holland announced for first match on WWE SmackDown, Britt Baker reacts to CM Punk saying she's a pillar of AEW, AEW wrestler doesn't believe WWE gave Ember Moon the platform that she deserved, and more. We're kicking off today with AEW where Cody Rhodes has been getting a mixed reaction at best from the crowd for quite some time. Despite being a babyface, Rhodes seems to get polarizing reactions no matter what he does, but there were some fans who took things way too far this week. On the latest edition of Dynamite, Rhodes, Pac, and the Lucha Bros faced Malachi Black, Andrade El Idolo, and FTR in eight-man tag action, where some fans had a nasty chant for the former TNT champion. Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said, So this is the report from someone who was there. On Cody, live, there were actually many, if not more people cheering or booing, but the people booing were really, really loud and obnoxious. It actually did get ugly. There were people who were chanting at Cody, and people started booing. It was a pretty bad scene during the main event in the crowd. After Dynamite, Cody teased a heel turn as it looked like he'd leave through the heel tunnel on the stage, but heel or face, nobody deserves to have that word chanted at them for any reason. Now, racism sadly remains to be a problem all over the world, even if the tolerance for racism has rightfully declined in recent years. In 2013, Austin Sopp, who'd later become AEW's Austin Gunn, used racial slurs and has now apologized for his words. He tweeted, Extremely insensitive tweets or replies I made when I was 17 years old in 2013 have been brought to my attention. I don't have the words to describe how I'm feeling right now. There is no excuse for it, and I am deeply sorry. The tweets in question see Gunn use the N-word several times, and on social media, fans compared his language to his father, Billy Gunn, who did blackface in both WWE and TNA. In his apology, Gunn said he attended several sensitivity meetings during his time in college and attends similar programs as part of AEW. AEW regularly provides excellent sensitivity programs that I have attended multiple times. I want to continue to learn from my mistakes, improve my view on the world, and strive to be a person my parents would be proud of. I was not raised this way, I do not condone this behavior or the use of these words, and I am extremely sorry. Thank you for reading this. The past will always come back to haunt you, and that's something Austin Gunn has learned. And with Austin currently feuding with Sting and Darby Allin, we have to see how their feud develops from here on. More from AEW as Jim Ross announced last month that he has skin cancer, but despite it, was able to work this week's episode of Dynamite. In addition to skin cancer, the WWE Hall of Famer is also dealing with a back injury, and fans shouldn't expect him for some time. On the latest Dynamite, JR signed off with a phrase that did not guarantee fans will hear him next week, and we know now just how long he'll be gone. In a statement, JR said he starts his first of 22 radiation treatments this Monday and hopes to be back behind the commentary desk by the December 29th tapings in Jacksonville. We continue to wish JR the very best as he battles his various medical issues right now, but it appears fans won't be hearing the Oklahoma native for at least the next few weeks. AEW losing JR, even for just one month, is quite the blow to the company, but Tony Khan is more than happy to see the Hall of Famer take some time off. In his statement, JR said that the support of Tony Khan has been a blessing, and in response, Khan fired off a tweet of his own, saying that everyone in AEW wishes him the best, and he looks forward to seeing Jim return in time for the New Year's Smash event at the end of December. Encouraging JR to, quote, kick the cancer's ass, the AEW president has no problem with the legendary commentator taking time away from his product, as right now, JR's health comes before anything else. In August, Bianca Belair walked into her first SummerSlam as SmackDown Women's Champion, but the show didn't go as she'd hoped. After being informed that her SummerSlam match with Sasha Banks was off, Belair was set to face Carmella, but instead lost the title in seconds to a returning Becky Lynch. Sitting down with Peter Rosenberg of Cheap Heat, the EST of WWE discussed SummerSlam and explained how everything was up in the air until the last minute.
SummerSlam, that was a day. That whole day was so chaotic, everything was so last minute. This one sitting beside me here, Montez Ford, really kept me intact and constantly checked my perspective. I was champion and then to lose my title in 26 seconds, it's a hard blow. Especially because I feel like I was just getting started and it got snatched away so quickly. It's a marathon and usually I don't go online and look at comments, but after my mom was like, you have to go online, people are rooting for you. They got behind me even more and they were mad about it. My fans understand and see something special in me and want to see me thrive and are rooting for me. Belair, who has since been drafted to Raw, added that her plan now is to just keep putting in great performance and that this will eventually put her back in the women's title picture, saying, the cream always rises to the top. The EST may be sure that consistent performances will guarantee her future in WWE, but we know that even veteran superstars can be released at a moment's notice, as last-minute changes and chaos backstage is something Bel Air may have to get used to now she's on the main roster. When ECW folded in 2001, the company was bought by WWE, who after the Invasion storyline, revived ECW as its own brand in 2006. In 2010, ECW aired its last episode to make way for WWE's newest show, NXT, but there may be new plans for Extreme Championship Wrestling. On November 20th, WWE filed a new application for the ECW trademark with the US Patent Office, with plenty of possible options for the trademark listed. Based on the description of the trademark, it's unlikely that WWE is bringing the brand back from the dead, but there are other options on the name. WWE may be looking to utilize ECW more in their console and mobile video games, as with WWE 2K22 just four months away, there's a chance we'll see a greater presence from the ECW brand to make up for a good portion of the game's roster being removed due to the releases. We know that Rey Mysterio will have a 2K showcase in the upcoming game, and it'd be cool to play through some of Rey's earliest matches in the US where he wrestled for the Extreme Promotion. Whatever WWE has planned for the ECW name, we should find out in the coming weeks and months, but this trademark, filed nearly 12 years after the last episode of ECW, is certainly an interesting one. SmackDown news is WWE doesn't have a ton announced for tonight's show, but we do know that one superstar will be making their in-ring debut on the blue brand. Since being called up, Ridge Holland has aligned himself with Sheamus, and tonight, the former rugby league player will face Cesaro in his main roster in-ring debut. Drew McIntyre and Jeff Hardy will also team up this week to face Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss, and WWE have teased that the next challenger for the Universal Champion Roman Reigns will step up tonight. With Brock Lesnar's suspension lifted, this could make for a volatile situation as we inch towards WWE Day 1 on January 1st next year, and time will tell who the Tribal Chief takes on next. Or from AEW as Britt Baker's women's title win was a long time coming, as she's been a constant part of the company since 2019. During this week's Dynamite, CM Punk and MJF battled it out in an intense promo, and in one line, Punk said that Baker has replaced MJF as one of the four pillars of AEW. On Twitter, The Dentist thanked Punk for his comment and added that AEW's merchandise department should now put her on the Four Pillars shirt. That shirt claims that MJF, Jungle Boy, Sammy Guevara, and Darby Allin are the four pillars on which AEW will continue to grow, but according to Baker, Punk, and countless fans, the reigning Women's World's Champion is just as deserving as a spot as another pillar of the company. And we're ending today with Ember Moon, who was part of the November 4th releases earlier this month. A former NXT Women's and NXT Women's Tag Champion, Moon had an underwhelming run on WWE's main roster, but her first opponent since being let go may already be confirmed. On Busted Open Radio, AEW's Thunder Rosa spoke about the recent releases, saying that Ember Moon is someone she's not had the opportunity to work with before. Rosa added that WWE didn't give Moon the platform she deserves, calling the former superstar so underrated. Rosa also spoke about Taya Valkyrie, who was also released this month, but said she worked with the former Frankie Monet several times before in Lucha Underground. Rosa concluded that she and Moon could have a banger of a match, and that she hopes they get to have that match. Moon, whose last match came on the October 5th NXT 2.0 against Mandy Rose, will have to wait for her non-compete clause to expire before she steps in the ring with anyone, but she may have her first match already lined up against the former NWA Women's World Champion.
Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.